Hi, welcome to another episode of Waste Management. Today we're standing here in the vegetable garden where we always begin, and we're here actually in front of a beautiful bed of kale. Is this not dynamite looking? This is the best looking kale I've ever seen, Stephen. <laughs> okay, and how much kale have you seen? Well, none outside of a grocery store, so this is it. Okay, well great, then it's good that we're actually out here looking at the kale. We've had a cold snap. Looks good, doesn't it? No, actually it looks great. I'm not kidding. It looks not only like it's been well grown, but it looks like it's at the peak where it would be now ready to pick and eat. Can't wait. I'm glad you said that because actually the students are here. They're actually growing this not for themselves, but for a local soup kitchen. So we're actually growing it. We're going to donate it to a soup kitchen and that way they have fresh produce. You know, that's a wonderful idea, and I'm glad we're doing that, and I hope we do more of it. But one of the things that I would like to ask, if somebody were providing this to wanted to grow their own, what would you need to start a home little garden that had kale in it? Glad you asked. Let's walk over here. Okay, you had asked about the kale, what you need. Actually, all you need is any halfway decent soil, and you direct seed. There's no need to start it in a greenhouse. You just take the seed, you slightly cover it with soil, and you see the, see the kale coming up? Cool. That's, that's actually been about a week or so. And then if you look over here at the other bed, over here, this bed is actually two weeks older than that bed. That bed over there, the large bed that we're gonna walk back to momentarily, uh, so I can show you how to harvest it and also tell you a little bit about the history of kale. That bed is actually about two, two and a half months old. Okay. So it is literally that easy to plant if you wanted to. You basically get a box or a little container of seeds and you seed soil somewhere around your house. Mm -hmm. Does it grow well here in South Florida? I mean, this is South Florida. It's like a green thing that grows everywhere. Does it grow well here? Okay, yeah, matter of fact, it does. Kale has a reputation. It's called a snow vegetable because it's actually one of the vegetables that sweetens up after a cold snap. Also, it can actually take cold so it can be covered with snow. And you could actually pitch the snow if I know we're in South Florida, we don't get snow. But nonetheless, down here, we've even grown this during the summer. Oh, and it's okay. been fine throughout our summer months. So it can actually take summer and winter. Great. down here and it's really durable also the nice thing about kale there are dozens and dozens of different varieties this type of kale is curly leaf you'll see when it gets bigger well you see the leaves starting to come out now the true leaves that actually gets bigger and is a ruffled end it comes there's a burgundy color there's a yellow color there's a variegated type uh, and then when we go back over there, I'll share the, you know, that kale, we'll talk about that. But generally all different types. I was trying to find out the origin of kale, where it came from. Where do you think it's from? Oh gosh, let's say Asia. You know what? No one knows. <laughs> there you go. So we'll say Asia. Asia okay. is good. No, actually they don't know, but what they have done, they have actually traced it back to BC. And they were actually using it then and especially in Northern Europe, uh, very, very, you know, high cultivated. I was also told that this is very high in vitamins. Well, that, that's oh, your job. Yeah. I mean, I love it. Kale is one of my favorite leafy vegetables. Let's go over back to the other one and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, good. So we're back at this dynamite looking bed here. This type of kale is called dinosaur kale. This is not the ornamental type that you generally get, like you go out to a restaurant and they right. put it for garnish. This is actually good for cooking. There are several ways to actually harvest this. How would you harvest it? Uh, probably pull out the plant, cut off the uh, root part, and then separate the leaves off. Okay, yes, you can actually do that, but it's actually a waste oh. to do that. A real easy way to do it is just... Take a leaf. All you do is pick off all the leaves, working from the bottom up. You can cut them off or they break off super easy. Just leave a few at the top. Now, if you, if you break them off, 
Will that plant continue to grow and sprout leaves? That's the exact reason why we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, it makes good sense. What happens is you remove the lower leaves. It still has a terminal bud up here. It'll continue to grow. This guy will double in height, producing more leaves as it grows. Perfect. I mean, yes, you can always cut it back if you like eating the stem. Okay. I mean, you can cut it back, and you can do that as well, and then it'll branch. But it takes a long time, and why not just let it continue to grow Perfect. and fill in? So in a garden at home, you could plant this, come out, pick what you wanted for that particular meal or what you were doing with it, and then it continues to grow and sort of replenish your your kale reserves. Exactly. Good. The perfect, when, easy thing to grow. It's a wonderful crop. And I, I really, I truly, I think it has a sweet flavor, but I, my, I don't taste normal, but I, I think it's wonderful. I just, I, I love it. Okay, we harvested some kale, and now I'm going to take you over to the onions, because I think they go well with kale. Yes. They go. do go well with, with kale, but before we leave, I do want to say a few things about the nutritional value. These are considered one of the 10 healthiest foods in the world. Damn. Kale happens to be extremely high in, first, vitamin K, which you can only get from green vegetables, vitamin A, vitamin C, copper, manganese. Then it goes into extremely high in things like calcium, uh, some of the other vitamins, including vitamin E. You can use kale as you might use spinach. It's not in the same group as spinach. This is actually in the same group as broccoli. It's called a cruciferous vegetable. And not only then does it have the nutrients, but it has other what are called phytochemicals, chemicals from plants like the indols, which help protect you from cancer. You chop it, you wash it and eat it like a salad lettuce, you chop it and steam it, and that's the best way to cook it. Or like if you're Steve Ritter, you just eat it like you were a, a, a bunny rabbit. But this happens to be one of those things that if you're growing your own garden, you want to include. It's versatile, it's easy to prepare, and it's one of the 10 most nutritious foods. So let's head over to onions. And tastes really good. Okay, over here we do have our onions. However, bizarre story with these onions. There are actually two types of onions. There is a Gran X type, which are short day, which we need to grow down here. Then there are the northern type of onions, which are these. <laughs> so therefore, they never produce the bulb. Okay. All we have is the green tops. These onions, they've been in the bed well over a year, about a year and a half. Wow. And they will never develop a bowl because the day length is just wrong. However, students and people have been eating it and they say they're the best green onions they have ever had. <laughs> so it's really not a waste. And we'll actually, I'm sure the soup kitchen will actually love to have these. Nutrition, uh, I know onion, I know the juice can be used to kill bacteria. Right. Because we have used it. But tell us a little bit about onions. Okay. Very interesting. Onions have a unique organic compound made from sulfur. And that then becomes the antibacterial, the anti-cancer. We have known for the history of humans that onions seem to be something that allowed you to be healthier. And now that we know more, we know why. Even Does that to keep people away from you too. No, oh yeah, my God. If you're serving onions, make sure everybody eats them. But that's the same sulfur compound, and by the way, that same compound is in garlic. Oh, go figure. Okay. So when you hear stories about the health benefit of, it's not always a nutrient. Sometimes it's something else. In the case of onions, it's something else. I've actually not tasted these before, but they are very good. So, if you happen to find these in uh, one of the local chain stores, you want to plant them just for green onions, they'll do dynamite for green onion. They just won't produce the bulb here. And these actually made it through an entire summer. They made it through the year. They've been fine. And it really is, it makes a nice little, you know, little bed. And the plants are actually, I guess, somewhat ornamental.
They would, they would look nice in a garden with kale. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. You picked one little uh, sort of stem leaf off there, and boy, that onion smell is coming right in my face. I don't know if I should cook something or... There you go. Yeah, you could chop this up and use it. And once again, you could put it in a food, a soup, a stew, something like that, and cooking it down. Or you can leave it as a raw gar garnish to a, a meal as well. Yeah, these just like normal green onions mm. that you would buy in a store. They look exactly like it. They have multiplied, though. Generally, they planted just one bulb, and they divided, divided. You could even see a new one coming along here. So it actually spread... We just didn't get the big bulb, but we do actually have some nice green to eat and also the basil part itself. So not really not bad, you know, worth doing, but just don't expect onions. onions. Go for the green onion. Okay, why don't we go inside and actually see what we can do with these. Great. Okay, let's go in. Fresh thinking is being served at Miami-Dade College. Create your own recipe for success in the evolution of food culture at the Miami Culinary Institute. Learn the skills you need to jumpstart your career in the culinary arts. Turn green into gourmet and celery into salary. Miami Culinary Institute. Food. Culture. Innovation. Visit us at MiamiDadeCulinary.com. Register now. Miami Culinary Institute. back to waste management. Now that we're inside, we took our coats off and we could actually talk about the kale and the green onions that we actually brought in here. And isn't so, it much nicer in here than it was outside? No, I like better outside. Okay, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> okay, let's talk about the, well, kale. Kale, we were talking earlier, it's in the cabbage family. Right. Uh, well, tell, tell okay. us about it. It's called a cruciferous vegetable. So it's with cabbage and Brussels sprouts and broccoli, that group. And it has some very unique compounds in it that are antioxidants. One is called an indol. And mm -hmm. that's the one most associated with the cruciferous vegetables and cancer prevention. So that's pretty cool. But kale, in terms of nutritive value, gives us high amounts of everything our diet in America is lacking in. And there's a reason our diet in America is lacking in the things kale has. Just McDonald's doesn't because, use it. <laughs> because we don't eat a lot of green or cruciferous vegetables. So it turns out to be a really, really highly regarded nutrient-dense food. The big deal with it is things like vitamin A, vitamin C, folate, magnesium, things that our American diet is low in. Well, again, mm -hmm. if you're low in green vegetables, you're low in certain nutrients, if you get one food that has lots and lots of all of them, this would be it. Yeah. Okay, so it's high in all the nutrients, uh, fiber, I assume. Very high in fiber, very low though in calories. Oh, okay. okay? And that's a good thing, a little tiny bit of protein and one of the very few foods you're actually going to get vitamin K in. That's a vitamin you make in your intestinal yeah, tract. Yes, so we don't want it. So, <laughs> but there's some interesting good news and bad news about that down the line, especially if you're on anticoagulants. But the cool thing about kale as well is in eating it, you could eat it raw. It sort of works like raw broccoli. Let me show you how that works. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's my mm -hmm. visual aid. Mm. Because it 
can be eaten raw pleasantly. I mean, you're lucky. Very good. It. I love it. You always go out and sort of pick this. Now, you could make it first a lovely garnish. And so if, in fact, you were trying to improve the plate appearance, mm -hmm. okay? And by the way, this is something highly used in Japan because it can cover a plate, it's attractively green, which puts color mm -hmm. on the plate, and then after you put something on there, it could be anything from sushi to some of the other more cooked Japanese type of dishes, but once you're done with the food on top of it, you can eat it, okay? And that's mm -hmm. a big deal in toward of supplying other things into sort of limited diets. Traditionally, though, and for thousands of years, kale has been something that we add in cooking. So if we're making mm -hmm. a conglomerate meal, what might be considered a soup or porridge or something mm -hmm. that we're putting a lot of foods in, kale was one of those great things to an add additive. In. Yeah, okay. it was an ingredient. It could be there, couldn't be there. But if it were there, it made whatever was cooking way more mm. nutritious. So if we, I was going to cook with this, let's say, I have this. I eat the, I could, I put the stem in too. If I, I'm going to steam it or something. Yes. In so fact, the stem, the leaf, they eat the whole thing. Right. And it boils down to nothing. If you were going to make kale as like, say, a side, as you would make spinach or broccoli, you would take this kale for about one person. It nah, cooks that. That's, that's half a person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Half of what you would eat. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> mostly what another person would eat. So if you were making for, let's say, four, you would have a bundle of kale, mm -hmm. and you'd want to steam it in one of those huge pots. Now, it doesn't take much, and there's different ways to do it. Steaming it, easy. You put a little bit of water in to cover the bottom of the pot. You put this in. You could put this in directly in the water, heat it up to steam, or you could put it in what's called a vegetable cooker, which is that insert that's sort of like a strainer, but mm -hmm. sits over the water. Yeah. And in seven minutes, it will have cooked down to a soft, um, green, condensed, cooked vegetable. Okay, but we also have onions. Can we add the onions yes. to it when we're cooking it? and that's what onions have always been used for. Traditionally, in the onion side, they have other benefits, um, mostly medicinal, i.e. for your health. And so onions have been around as a additive to foods for your health, but also in the bulb onions that you were explaining outside, those are, are a food source where people literally eat the bulb as they were eating an apple. Mm -hmm. Okay, something like this, you could do that. If it were clean, yeah. you could just gnaw on They're good the, ending, the way they are. Or the leaf. But both sides, the bulb area down here and the green leaf up here, have been used to enhance the flavor of food to the point that at one time they were so valuable, mm -hmm. they were actually used as money, as barter. You got paid in onions. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to bring that back to the waste management. One of the problems with the American diet is that we are way overnourished when it comes to calories, mm -hmm. but way undernourished when it comes to the micronutrients. One of the ways to get fat, sugar, even salt, which is in way too high quantity in the American diet, cut down or out of a food is with something like onions. The health value is just almost undescribable. It's associated because of the sulfur chemicals in here, which is what it makes it smells like What onions. keeps people away. Yes, this is what keeps people away, sulfur. We know it's in garlic. We mm -hmm. know the smell of a rotten egg is mm -hmm. that smell because of the sulfur compound. Well, that's the bad news. The good news is it does lots of cool things in the body. Mm -hmm. And whether it be anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, whether it reduces cancer, whether it reduces heart disease, all of these have been not just associated, but actually researched and with proof that it has that benefit. Mm -hmm. But in onions, the benefit comes when you mix it with other vegetables. And so, you take the onion 
And now, okay, as an example, I'm a southerner. In the south, one of the ways that we used to make kale was to throw some bacon in a cast iron skillet, cook the bacon down to the drippings, pull the bacon out, chop it, and then literally saute the kale in bacon drippings. Then it tastes real good. Then it tastes real good. <laughs> but it's also now high in calories, high in saturated fat, high in cholesterol, high in sodium. But really good. But if you like bacon, and all really Southerners good. do. Who doesn't like who bacon? Who doesn't Come like on. bacon? You're right. The way that you get this prepared where you still have the nutritive values, but without the fat, the sodium, etc., is now to take the kale, chop it up, okay? Mm -hmm. Take the onion, and again, chop it up. If it's a bulb-based onion, then you want to saute it lightly as well. Less than five minutes, again, can be less if it's sliced thin. Mm -hmm. Of course, the problem with slicing onions thin is by the time you get it sliced, you're crying and mm -hmm. you can't see the darn onion. Well, that's the nice thing about these. Yeah, you don't cry. You don't cry. You can just literally cut a few cuts, mm -hmm. and then... When you're steaming this, you throw the onions in. And by the way... At the same time? At the same so time. So they cook the same length of time. They same about the same length of time. But then for the onions themselves, they go in everything. There okay. literally is no dish hardly in sort of a side vegetable or entree-based dish. You can't add onions to. And again, in the waste management, trying to cut down on the calories means replacing what we can, in this case, some of the seasoning calories, mm -hmm. but still retaining some flavor. Now, I have to go back and tell you, in the history of onions, we don't know exactly where, where they come from mm -hmm. or how long they've been used. So they're with kale. They're with kale. Okay. We're talking about two, three, five thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. We have documentation that these things were around. The onion traveled quickly around the world. Some onions, as you said mm -hmm. earlier, grow in the winter. Some mm -hmm. grow in the summer. The summer onions are sweeter. They're the ones that we think of when we see people eating, eating an, an onion. onion. Yeah, vihela yeah. or something sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they also go the same onions into foods, and they slightly change the flavor from the winter onions, mm -hmm. which is okay, too. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to ask you, we're running out of time here. I want to ask you about storage of stuff. Let's suppose I were to go to a store and buy a whole bunch of kale. How long can I keep it? You know, easily, if it is closed up and refrigerated, easily keep it a week where it would not lose mm -hmm. its same visual effect. What does but it do to nutritional value? Not a thing. Even okay. cooking, interesting, doesn't change the nutritive value. Mm -hmm. What s slight loss you would get from leaching into the water, one, is things that it's already mm -hmm. very high in. But then second, since it's steaming, you can actually recover the water. There isn't much there. Okay. Okay. So actually, with so these are basically wonder foods, dynamite to eat, keeps forever in the refrigerator, uh, nutritionally, and they really just taste good on their own. And so. again, that's how we think of kale, and as it grows outside, like you mm -hmm. you showed us in the garden, and we pick it, we bring it in, and immediately make a salad out of it. Mm -hmm. Slice it up, add tomatoes, add a little bit of sliced onions. Out of vinaigrette, mm -hmm. and you have salad. Okay, well, we're out of time. Sorry to interrupt, but thank you very much Thanks. for watching another episode of Waste Management. We'll be back with you next time. Have a good day. <laughs>